For this process, you will need your printed 8x8 image, your ruler, and your pencil. We're going to begin at the top of the image by marking out every inch to make your grid lines one inch apart. So with zero on the edge, mark at one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You don't need to mark at zero or at eight, but they should end at the edge of your images. Now, you need to repeat the same thing on the bottom of the image. Make sure zero is on the edge and mark at one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven inches. Once again, you don't have to mark at zero or eight. With those marks correct, you can now turn your paper or your ruler and connect those two marks across your image. If you have dark areas of the image, it will be helpful if you press really hard with your pencil so that you can see your lines. Now I want to repeat that process on the left and right edges, but I don't have a line there, which is why we selected show corner crop marks when we printed this image from Photoshop. I'm going to use those corner crop marks to connect and make a line so I can see the left and right edges of my image. Then I can mark at 1 inches, 2 inches, 3 inches, 4 inches, 5 inches, 6 inches, and 7 inches on the left side and do the same on the right hand side. So make sure zero is at the top and mark at one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now I can turn my paper or my ruler and connect those marks across the image, once again drawing dark when I draw across dark areas to make sure that I can see my line. We'll be able to use these boxes to perfectly copy this image and make it bigger on our drawing paper in the next step. So for this part, you will need your 12 by 12 drawing paper, your ruler, and your pencil. If you measure this paper, you'll see it's exactly as big as the ruler, which is bigger than your original image. To have the same number of boxes on a larger paper, we're gonna mark every inch and a half. So mark at one and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, and ten and a half. This is on the left side. Now you know you need to repeat the process on the right side. Once again, your measurements are one and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, and ten and a half. Once you have your marks, you can turn your paper or your ruler and connect them lightly across the paper. I would suggest you do this lightly just in case you make a mistake and you need to go back and redraw. Now you can see that we have eight sections, not only on our image, but also on our paper. So even though the sections are larger, because they're the same amount and they'll be the same proportion, they'll be squares, it'll work to enlarge your image. We need to finish these squares by marking on the sides again, now that I've turned my paper. One and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, and ten and a half. Repeat on the opposite side of the paper. In this case, it's going to be my left now, since I've turned the paper so many times. Mark at one and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, and ten and a half inches. Now once again, you use your ruler to connect these marks across the paper. Now that we have an 8x8 grid on our image and an 8x8 grid on our paper, you can start drawing what you see. Remember, you don't have to draw anything for the background, which should be white anyway. So I like to go through and mark those boxes that I don't need to worry about drawing. Then pick an easy place to start and copy what you see, only make sure that it gets 50% larger because you're copying a one inch square into a one and a half inch square. 
Follow the contours and the edges of the different values within your image and continue working your way around the image until the entire thing is drawn.